All right, so continuing with the supplemental lessons, let's briefly review the ESP IDF Free Artos as a precursor to what's to come in the application development lessons. So the scope of this lesson won't be too exhaustive and will be limited to the following. I'll show you where to find documentation if you want to go more in depth into FreeRTOS, and then we'll review some differences from the ESP IDF version of FreeRTOS with the vanilla or regular FreeRTOS. And then we'll take a look at task states, task creation, and the X task create Pintacore API, and the V task delay as well. All right, so let's jump right in. Okay, so in the case that you're new to FreeRTOS, FreeRTOS is a real time operating system kernel for embedded devices. And the following page from freeartos.org provides a clear description of an Artos. So to summarize, the scheduler in a real-time operating system is designed to provide a predictable execution pattern. And often, embedded systems have real-time requirements, which means that they must respond to a certain event within a strictly defined time or deadline. The guarantee to meet these requirements can only be made if the behavior of the operating system scheduler can be predicted or is deterministic. All right, so you may want to bookmark this link for the FreeRTOS books available from freeartos.org here. They are nice to have as an additional resource. And if you go to the FreeRTOS fundamentals link, you'll find that this page contains background information on multitasking and basic real-time concepts, which is intended for beginners. So if you want to get more into theory, this is also a good resource. Additionally, you can find expressive documentation about their version of FreeRTOS by following this link, and we'll take a look at parts of that shortly. Okay, so there are a few apparent differences between the ESP IDF FreeRTOS and the regular or vanilla FreeRTOS that affect our application development. Firstly, the ESP32's Extensa MCU contains two Extensa processor cores, and the ESP IDF uses its own version of the Extensa port of FreeRTOS, which provides multi-core support. And so in the case that you're already familiar with FreeRTOS, but not the IDF version, we do not have to call the VTask Start Scheduler API when using the ESP IDF FreeRTOS. Also, the FreeRTOS task stack size is specified in bytes when using the IDF, not words, as you would do with regular FreeRTOS. Additionally, the application startup flow is relevant here, which covers everything that happens after the application starts executing and before the app main function starts running inside the main task. You can find details here where the high level view of the startup process is described. First, the first stage bootloader in ROM loads the second stage bootloader image to RAM from the flash offset hex 1000. In the second step, the second stage bootloader loads the partition table and the main application image from flash. The main application incorporates both RAM segments and read-only segments via flash cache. Then the application startup executes, and at this point, the second CPU and Arto scheduler are started. You can read up on the details of each of these steps, so feel free to come here if you're interested. But for now, let's go over to the application startup details. And so everything that happens after the application starts, and before the app main is called, involves the following port initialization of hardware and basic C runtime environment, system initialization of software services and free RTOS, and running the main task and calling app main, which will be our application entry point. All right, so I think that's enough details about the application startup for our purposes. Okay, so in an RTOS implementation of a design, the program is divided into different tasks, and each task runs continuously in an infinite loop. Okay, so we can create FreeRTOS tasks using the XTaskCreate APIs. And to do that, we'll need to include FreeRTOS slash task.h. And there are two API options available. We can use XTaskCreate, which lets the ESP IDF FreeRTOS choose which core of the ESP32 that the task should run on. Then this is the basic structure of a FreeRTOS task with an infinite loop as the main body of the task. And here, the XTaskCreate API creates the task. And so, XTaskCreate pin to core allows specifying which core the task should run on. In the next, I'll summarize the description of the API parameters. All right, so the first parameter, PV task code, is the custom C function or FreeRTOS task that runs in an infinite loop. And PC name 
is the descriptive name that you can give a task and is only used as a debugging aid. US stack depth is the memory in bytes that should be allocated by the kernel to the task. PV parameters is an optional parameter that is a pointer that can be used by the task. UX priority is the priority at which the task should run on and the higher priority number takes precedence. And PV created task is an optional task handle by which the created task can be referenced. For example, if you need to use various free RTOS APIs like VTask delete, as shown here, where the task handle is referenced. And then X core ID is the core of the ESP32 that the task is to be assigned to, which can be core zero or core one. And this link will take you to a description of task states, as well as a state transition diagram. Okay, so let's take a look at the state diagram and I'll briefly summarize the task states. So the running state means that the task is executing and utilizing the processor. And the ready state here means that the task is able to execute, but is not currently running because the task with an equal or higher priority is currently running. So if a task is blocked, this can be caused by a temporal event, for example, a call to VTask delay that causes the task to be placed into the block state until the delay period has expired or it can be blocked due to an external event, which means that the task is waiting to receive from a queue, event group, or notification or semaphore event. And this differs from tasks in the suspended state where there is no timeout and tasks only enter and exit the suspended state when explicitly commanded to do so using v task suspend and x task resume API calls. All right, and these are linked, so feel free to read up on those as well. And about VTask delay, it's used to send a task into the block state for a set number of ticks. The actual time that the task remains blocked depends on the tick rate, and the constant port tick period milliseconds can be used to calculate real time from the tick rate. For example, if the free RTOS tick rate in the SDK config is set to 100 Hz, as it's shown here, then this port tick period is 10 milliseconds and 500 divided by 10 is 50 ticks, which is what we pass to VTask delay, and that is X delay in this example. And with 50 ticks at a period of 10 milliseconds, we end up with the 500 millisecond delay. All right, so that's it for this quick overview of FreeRTOS.